Carry on call on Comesa and indeed the entire continent to chart our own path, to rise to the occasion and chart our own path for our growth and development. We thank you. His Excellency, Mr. Abdel Fattah El Sisi. My deepest appreciation to His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zambia for the hospitality and the generosity we have been accorded here. This is very conscious. Streamline the movement of trade exchange among and between themselves. The way that uh, brought about an increase in the inter-exports of the Kamesa countries, reaching Kamesa countries this year, to the highest value since Egypt's subscription to the Kamesa, reaching to four. Travel and tourism contributes U.S. dollars 20.8 million to the economies of Comesa member states, representing 42.5 of our total service exports, translating to 9% of our GDP and accounting for almost 10% of total employment. Even at this level of contribution, there remains huge untapped potential for tourism in our region, which demands an integrated approach. To exploit this potential, we must pay closer attention to existing tourism market opportunities, especially in terms of such niche tourism sectors as in agriculture, construction, education, fishing, manufacturing, sports, creative art, transport, utilities, and other services. I say this as somebody who has sampled some of the tourism opportunities in our continent. I think it was 2017 I came to see the mighty Zambezi, Livingstone. I stayed in Livingstone for a week, and I can confirm that Zambia is amazing. I was in Namibia to see the sand dunes in Namibia. I have been to Egypt to see the great pyramids. Africa is simply amazing. And we have huge tourism opportunities and potential. The only challenge is that it is segmented. We need to synergize our tourism product so that those who travel to our continent can 
sample our tourism products across national boundaries. And it begins with us as Africans putting our tourism destinations as number one. Before you imagine going to Dubai or going to somewhere in the US, please imagine going to somewhere in Africa. We have great tourism potential. Further, it is imperative for us to liberalize the service industry by pursuing accelerated conclusion of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area negotiations on trade in services. That is business communication, financial, transport, energy, and tourism, in order to facilitate the growth of tourism and accelerate the expansion of the Comesa economy. I also believe that we can be much bolder and fully embrace the spirit of integration and the unity of our people and configure a regime of modular tourism packages, which entail complementary products in different countries designed to spread value throughout the region and over an incomparable experience to all our visitors. This is exactly what, was, what I was saying. I thank the Secretariat for directing our attention to these important matters and facilitating a highly rewarding and long overdue conversation on the opportunities we can unlock through joint effort. More than ever, I am convinced that we have an, an unprecedented opportunity to transform Comesa one sector at a time and to lead our people to prosperity in a region defined by opportunity, by unity, and most importantly, by collaboration. Our energy transport and communications infrastructure development program embraces ambitious green commitments and explicitly pursue ecologically responsive climate resilience and environmental sustainability as integral parameters of progress. We have found many partners for our green agenda and investors, as well as other development partners to complement our efforts to mainstream and institutionalize green investment. Our sense of urgency in this matter is informed by reports from the United Nations Environmental Program, UNEP, that to fulfill the SDG by 2030 and the net zero aspirations by 2050, the world must invest approximately US dollars 6.9 trillion annually in the necessary, sustainable, resilient infrastructure. On trade, the, com the combined population of Comesa member states at 580 million, with a GDP of US dollars 768 billion, is a tremendous opportunity. The potential for intra-Comesa trade is simply enormous, and the demand for value-added products is bound to keep growing well into the future. Value-adding offers higher returns, incentivizes industrialization, enhances productivity, deepens technological advancement, increases high-quality jobs, bolsters wealth creation, and promotes competitiveness. There is a very strong case for us in Comesa to shift away from primary production, especially of agricultural commodities, to industrial manufacturing across all sectors. I listened to you, Mr. President, and you spoke <laughs> to this subject. We cannot continue as a continent to be a continent that exports primary products. Our contribution as a continent to international trade is only 3%. In a case where we contribute close to 18% of the world population at the moment, our intra-Africa trade is only at 17%, while others whether it is in Europe, it is at 70%. In Asia, it is at 60%. In other areas, it's at 
in Africa is only at 17 percent. It speaks to the huge opportunity that we have for intra-Africa trade, and that is why I agree with you that we should eliminate the borders that act as barriers for trade, for movement of people, for movement of goods, and for movement of services. The work that lies ahead before us as a body is true and full economic integration. And the theme for this summit, namely economic integration for a thriving Comesa, anchored on green investment, value addition, and tourism, is a reflection of our collective awareness that economic integration is the great challenge and need of our time. There is no doubt in my mind that we all agree about the necessity of economic integration. But I'm concerned that we as a body are not yet pursuing it with the urgency it deserves. From my perspective, we must accept two realities that necessitate that we move with speed on economic integration. The first of these realities is the devastating period we find ourselves in. Since 2017, ours has been a block of nations under multiple devastating assaults. In that six-year period, we have had Cyclone Idai, Tropical Storms Anna and Gombe, and Cyclone Freddy. In that same period, we have suffered droughts, the effects of the war in Eastern Europe, and wars within the African continent, some of whom are just proxy wars, and outbreaks such as COVID-19 and cholera. These external and internal assaults have compounded the devastation we were already under from historic systemic vulnerabilities such as weak food systems, weak financial controls, weak health systems, weak public institutions, unsustainable debt levels, and international trade policies that disadvantage our economies. All of these factors have become the perfect storm that has left us as a block in a weak position in the context of global trade. That is why all of us agreed that our only chance of improving our position is to leverage the strength in our numbers, to integrate our economies urgently so that we have collective resilience against unpredictable external forces that are coming against us with greater and greater frequency over time. And secondly, our economic integration is a matter of urgency because since the time we ratified the African continental free trade area, there have already been forces from beyond our continent moving into position to work our own economic framework to their advantage rather than to ours. As such, if we do not quickly get our act together with economic integration on our own terms, it may very well be that by the time we fully integrate, the mechanism will have already been rigged against us to ensure that the beneficiaries of our economic integration are non-African economies. And for that reason, I call on all of us to move with speed on the key pillars of our economic integration. Those pillars include working together to increase our productive capacities in key sectors such as agriculture, tourism, and mining, which we have adopted in Malawi and referred to as the ATM strategy liberalizing and harmonizing processes for facilitating the movement of goods and people across our borders, developing and synchronizing our infrastructural, 
transport, energy, digital, and financial, as well as law enforcement systems to cut out inefficiencies and illegalities that are used to defraud our economies. And most importantly, trading, 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 and more trading amongst ourselves. That is what we must do, and we must do it now with no apology to anybody. And thank you for your attention. Regionally, several obstacles separate Comesa from its vision of prosperity through integration and industrialization. We have a few sectors where value addition is entrenched, and we need to expand the areas where we add value to our primary products. Additionally, weak regulatory frameworks, rampant non-tariff barriers, and weak technological capacity contribute to our underperformance in value addition and therefore in trade. Consequently, our economies remain vulnerable to global price volatility, affecting our primary product exports. In turn, this severely constricts our space to pursue the structural transformation of our economies and to achieve SDGs. To overcome this handicap, we have a historic opportunity to join forces in building the capacity of every player along the value chain, especially as regards ability to comply with competitive standards and to harmonize our standards and regulatory frameworks. In so doing, we will enhance the competitiveness of our products and enable them to penetrate regional and international markets. And Comesa should be able to provide the building blocks for us to ultimately build the Africa continental free trade area. Mr. President, in the last four months, I have, spent, I have sent a special envoy to 15 countries, among them Egypt, from Egypt to South Africa, because we need to consolidate the market around East African community, SADC, and COMESA. We are remaining with a few signatures. I think only three countries need to sign in so that we can consolidate this market into the TFTA that will give us 720 million people with a GDP of 1.3 trillion, and we can create a huge market that can be competitive with other markets globally. Your Excellencies, time is of the essence. We need to persuade the few countries that are remaining so that we can actualize this market, eliminate unnecessary non-tariff barriers, eliminate unnecessary tariffs that are already built in our taxing, tax regimes so that we can trade more within our region. There is absolutely no justification for us in Africa to remain at 17% of intra-African trade when others are at 70%. There is no justification. It is not wise, it is not intelligent, it is not right. Leaders who have led us in the period ahead, in fact, in the period past. We know what it takes to commit time. We know what it takes to commit resources to the leadership of our commerce. Our gathering today symbolizes our shared commitment and resolve to advance common interests to propel growth and development through investment and trade in our commercial region. We are meeting against the backdrop of slowed growth, some of it caused by the COVID pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, some of it caused by instability 
on our own continent, which really should not be allowed to perpetuate for years and years. We have seen a lot of instability on our continent and is slowing our work and efforts down. We all need to ensure that we acknowledge that peace, security, stability are essential ingredients to the developmental agenda, social and economic development. So as we discuss here, we must be mindful that we must do everything possible to bring stability in our individual countries, stability in our region, Comesa, and on our continent and the global community. Instability anywhere is instability everywhere. Don't we know it? We know it very well. From different angles, imported inflation in our own economies, obviously migration, loss of property, damage, dislocation to young people. Those can never be ingredients that we need to have around us in our quest to achieve development. We need to stabilize our commerce, obviously, our continent and the world. We have a mammoth task ahead of us to take stock of where we are, obviously where we're coming from, where we are, and define growth and the path we want to walk towards that growth that is resilient and can survive, can ameliorate the exogenous variables that we face, forces outside our control, are better managed when we are stronger, when we manage the variables that we control much better, then we can survive these shocks. And this is an obligation we have, and we don't have a choice in it. For a long time, this union, this our union, this commercial union, has been one of the largest, if not the largest, free trade area on our continent before the advent of, of, obviously, the African continental free trade area. Um, Comesa remained the one single largest trading bloc on our continent. As Comesa, we continue, and we should continue working hard to run through our mandate, to actualize that which we were created for, economic integration, in line with the aspirations of our Agenda 2063, to achieve a single and integrated African economic community with a significant presence on the global stage. As Africa, we cannot continue to be observers on the continental stage. We cannot expect others to make decisions in our favor all the time. We have to be present at this stage. The regional, the regional economic communities, and in particular Comesa, remain the pillars to our continental integration agenda. We need to leverage the economies of scale presented by the size of our region, just the sheer size of our region with a population of around 583 million people, a gross domestic product of over $800 billion, and indeed a geographical area of 12 million square kilometers. Yes, this landmass has the resource endowment that should allow us to exploit them properly, to manage, to work towards reaching our agenda. It's very important that we, as a continent and as a commercial, acknowledge God's gift to us, land. Not just land, but fertile land, water. Not just water, not salt water, but fresh water. And indeed, other attributes, other agronomic conditions, hydrological conditions, as I mentioned, we must make maximum use of this in our quest to better the lives of our people. The entire world, ladies and gentlemen, is saddled with enormous and intertwined economic, geopolitical, and climate crisis, which have exerted enormous adverse impact on our continent and also our region. This evolving crisis, were catalyzed by the COVID-19 pandemic, 
with uniquely devastating consequences on our economies. Although we are now fully embarked on the path to normalcy, we have the singular opportunity to act collectively in crafting effective strategies for accelerating recovery and deepening resilience to anchor sustainable policies, mechanisms, and frameworks. Green investment is one area of unexplored opportunity to resolutely pursue socioeconomic development incorporating ecological sound, ecologically sound and environmentally responsible practices. Our progress in achieving sustainable development goals will increasingly depend on enhanced investment in infrastructure and assets that are necessary for rapid economic growth, but environmentally friendly and resilient to climate impacts. The aim, of course, is to achieve overall reduction in emissions, enhance energy and resource efficiency, develop facilities that can withstand extreme climatic pressure and avert loss of diversity and critical ecosystems. Kenya has made bold commitments to pursue green investment throughout the country and to incorporate ecologically sustainability into the implementation of every policy program and project. This way, we shall be constantly vigilant to opportunities to implement initiatives ranging from solid waste management to agroforestry as urgent strategic investments. The Africa Union Agenda 2063 and the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, as well as COMESA strategic objectives, have been incorporated into Kenya's National Transformation Agenda to empower us to pursue opportunities locally and further have a field coherently, consistently, effect efficiently, and effectively. We have also positioned Kenya and are championing for the radical repositioning of Africa as the clean, green, young continent of the future in order to exploit the opportunities arising from global transition to green industrialization and to transform the challenges posed by climate crisis into opportunities to lead the next industrial revolution from Africa. We are therefore deeply committed to Comesa's vision of prosperity through integration. Our theme for the 22nd Comesa Summit resonates very well with Kenya, especially our aspiration for radical national transformation. The promotion of green investment to power a zero carbon global industrial order is a priority. Through robust policy, we have taken positive measures to construct an investment climate that attracts high quality global capital to our economy and to promote a business environment that encourages value addition and secondary manufacturing. I therefore commend the Secretariat of and the organizers for their work in arranging this summit and for identifying this theme to highlight important development agendas and to anchor our deliberations. As I thank President Sisi, I also take this special moment to extend my warmest congratulations and Kenya's best compliments to the President of Zambia, the incoming Chair of Commerce Authority. I recognize and appreciate his continued devotion to the effective integration of our region. I also commend him for offering to host the 22nd Comesa Summit. The Africa Union's Agenda 2063. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for welcoming us, and congratulations on the assignments that have been given to you today by Comesa. As I thank President Sisi, I also take this special moment to extend my warmest congratulations and Kenya's best compliments to the President of Zambia, the incoming Chair of Comesa Authority. I recognize and appreciate his continued devotion to the effective integration of our region. I also commend him 
for offering to host the 22nd COMESA Summit. The Africa Union's Agenda 2063. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for welcoming us, and congratulations on the assignments that have been given to you today by COMESA.